This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Today we're dealing with the Mila dishwasher that has the F14 error. And that means it isn't getting enough water pressure for some reason. It could be that there's some kind of obstruction somewhere uh, around the impeller. Also could be it doesn't have enough water coming into it to create enough pressure. Or it could be that the motor's wearing out. So we're going to do a little bit of testing to figure out what's happening. So one way you know you're having the trouble is you can hear the motor, the circulation motor, start and stop over and over. So I'm just going to float something in here to see if the water level is okay. The water should reach up to the bottom of this filter handle. And this is a little bit below. So one thing to try uh, before you dig into the machine is pour in some vegetable oil. Once, once the unit fills, pour in about a cup of vegetable oil and then let it run. Sometimes that'll lubricate the impeller and bring the pressure back up where it needs to be. So we keep hearing the motor start and stop, start and stop. So we're going to dig into this machine and see what's going on. Once again, this is just checking the water level looks good. It's as high as the filter handle, so we know we have the right amount of water. So we drain the water out by doing the cancel. Now I'm using a turkey baster to just get the remaining water out of the sump. I want this to be as dry as possible before I remove it from the cabinet. I'm just going to put the filter back into position. You want to make sure you get all the dishes out of the dishwasher. And then we have to disconnect it from the cabinet. Usually there's a couple of Phillips head screws coming up or from the side here that we have to take out. And they're the ones that are usually holding the dishwasher in. We're going to make sure that we have it unplugged. We're going to make sure that we have the water valve turned all the way off. So all the way to the right, the one that goes to the dishwasher. Let's just reach in there and make sure it's turned all the way off. Usually the Mila um, design is such that you have a, a long fill tube and also a long drain tube. So you can usually keep things connected and you can pull the machine out of the cabinet and still have a little bit of room. So you usually don't have to disconnect a lot. So I'm pulling the quick panel off by removing a couple of Torx 15 screws from the kick panel. And that's going to let me get to the front legs and also the controls for the back legs to lower the dishwasher so that it's easier to get out of the cabinet. So I'm going to use my Torx 15 bit to go into this one little screw here. And there's, a, there's a diagram on it that shows that if you turn one direction, it lowers it. If you turn the other direction, it raises it. So I want to lower the back. There's two legs in the back. It's a pretty ingenious design, but allows you to, from the front, either raise or lower the back. So I'm lowering the left and the right rear legs. And then I'll use a standard head screwdriver to reach into these notches on the front leg. And I'm going to turn them to my right. And that's going to make them lower so I can get the dishwasher out. So I've turned off the power. I've turned off the water. I've made sure the Phillips head screws are disconnected from the top, sometimes from the sides. And I'm lowering the back legs and the front legs on both sides. I was able to slide the dishwasher out. I laid it on its side. And now I'm going to remove the bottom drip panel so I can get to the components. So there's four screws, two here at the bottom. These are again Torx 15 screws. And there's also two on the front. Then I'll remove these two on the front. This video makes the removal of the motor look kind of complicated, but it's not, it's not that bad. It's just important to take your time. There are a lot of little things you have to disconnect. So I'm going to pull off. I got the drip pan off. I'm going to pull off the heater connectors. There's two, there are two spade connectors. Just pull them straight off. I pulled off one of the ground connectors. I'm pulling off. These two that go to the capacitor, which I really didn't need to, but 
don't really need to take those off. I have to take these two hose clamps off of these two tubes that are coming off of the bottom of the motor. So I loosen them and pull them down. The one in the back is a little hard to get to. Just take your time. And then I'm going to disconnect the wires that go to the pressure heater switch that is on the top portion of the motor. And just take your time again, just squeeze in on the tabs on the top, wiggle them off. Don't worry too much about, there's four wires, but don't worry too much about which way they go because they can only go in one way when you return them. You can't get it wrong. Okay, I got one more earth connection removed, one more of the grounds. And now I'm going to pull down on this tube to get it to let go. Just take your time, just wiggle it, twist it, and it'll come loose. Usually these have been on for 10 or more years, so they're, they're not easy to get off. Just take your time, one in the back, wiggle that one, pull it down. Get that off, and then pulling off this black tube on the top. I already disconnected the hose clamp. I'm going to wiggle that one off. So we've got almost everything disconnected now, all the hoses. There's a little screw on the back, uh, Torx 15 that we have to remove. And that's just really the only thing left holding the motor in. So just checking to make sure I got all the little connectors off. And I'm using a standard head screwdriver just to help me pry back on the metal behind the motor and I'm pulling it out at about 30 degrees, pulling it toward me, and then you'll find that it'll just slip out. Just take your time. Now you've got the circulation motor in your hand and you can do a little bit of disassembly. So we took off this top part by removing two Torx head screws and now I'm turning it righty tighty so it's opposite threads to pull the impeller off. I put a standard head screwdriver in behind to help hold it. Now I got the impeller off and I'm going to take a look at the impeller and see if there's anything caught in there. So in this case we did have some kind of a piece of plastic or a label or something got sucked into the impeller and I would say that it was limiting the pumps pumping power by about half. So we got this thing out of there and that's most likely the cause of the F14 error. You just can't create enough pressure because it's obstructed. So we get all that junk out and now it's just a matter of putting it back together and we will have a Miele dishwasher that works again. So buying a new motor is possible. They're very expensive, usually around $450, and it's pretty rare that they wear out. Sometimes a capacitor could wear out. So I'm going to put a standard head screwdriver again into position, and I'm going to turn the impeller to my left. So instead of lefty loosey, it's lefty tighty because it's reverse threaded. So getting that really tight. Just tight, tight enough with your hand is fine. And there's the junk that was in there. I'm not sure quite what that was, probably a label. So I'm gonna put the motor back together and I just wanna put this little rubber gasket in here on the top piece. Make sure it's sitting in there properly. And then this will only go on one way where the little holes line up for the screws and also it has two little metal slots that you have to bend back over to lock it. So I'm going to put in these two screws first. These are Torx 15s. Kind of cool, once you get the right bit, it's pretty much the same size for every fastener in this machine. So tighten that one up. And then I'll use a standard head screwdriver to help pry the metal tab back over the plastic piece. There's two of them on each side. 
So there's really four things holding this on, two screws and two of these little metal tabs. So make sure you get them on there tight, otherwise you'd have a leak. Take a good look at it. And now you're ready to put the motor back in and you'll have a machine that works. Using that little vegetable oil in the beginning sometimes is all it takes. In this case we had an obstruction so we had to take the motor out. So now to put it back in, we're just doing everything kind of in reverse order. We're going to push it in at an angle and there'll be the back end, we'll go back into the sump, sump assembly and then we'll push it in until there's a couple little plastic pins that line up on the metal frame. And then you can put the screw back in to hold it in. There, it just clicked in, there we go. And then we can start putting pieces back on. So we just gotta reconnect all the tubes. The tube, the, the yellow tube here in the back is a little bit tricky to get in. I usually use a little bit of liquid um, detergent to put around the inside perimeter of that back tube just so it's slippery. It's more likely to slip on. So I just added this ground connection back onto the motor. There's, I think, three of them in total. So take your time. Make sure you find all three. And we're just putting the black tube back on, the hose clamp back on, making sure everything's tight. I'm going to reach in here now and I'm going to, it's going to take a little bit of time, but I'm going to get all these wire connectors back onto the pressure switch. Remember, they only go on one way. You don't want to force anything, so if you have it correct, it'll just slip right in. And just keep playing with it and you'll, you'll, get, them, you'll get them right. Take your time. This thing above my left hand, that's the heater relay. That sometimes that, that'll stop working on the relay dishwasher. So I got the uh, back tube back on, I got the hose clamp back on. I'm putting the motor connector back on, this blue wire. Make sure that's on, that's giving power to the motor. And I'll put on this other yellow tube, the smaller one that goes in the front, much easier to put on. And I'm just, I'm just pushing in on all the electrical connections, making sure they're tight. Using my hose clamp pliers to get the hose clamp on this front tube back into position. So we just don't want any leaks. We want to make sure all the electricals hooked back up. Just give, give yourself a good five minutes when you're done and just look carefully at all your connections. I think it's important to give it a test run before you put it all back into the cabinet. Make sure everything's going to work for you. So I'm just reconfirming all the connections. Looks good. Everything seems tight. I'll put that last little screw in. That's the one that really locks in the motor. Again, that's a Torx 15. We zip that in. And then we just have to put on the drip tray and we're all done. Here's a drip tray. It has four screws that hold it on. So two that are near the rear legs and then two that are in the very front of the machine, these two. All right, well, thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance.